Hey there, folks. So let's go ahead and discuss custom GBA carts. Uh, now, I did just upload a video on uh, custom Game Boy Color carts, especially with those new shells that came out. And, well, there were some new GBA shells. So I thought it might be uh, prudent to discuss some of the GBA stuff. But I figured there was enough to talk about that I'd split it up. So without further ado, let's jump into it. So brief history on GBA stuff. Uh, I've got here a collection of OEM carts that I was going to use for um, like donor shells because I do have quite a few GBA flash carts, be it um, repros as you want to call them or the inside gadgets flash carts or I even have um, some other branded flash carts. I'll pull that out in a second or stuff like the EverDrive and uh, Easy Flash. Um, but the choice for GBA cart shells was somewhat lacking, so I bought a collection of carts to use for donors. Um, most Game Boy games, Game Boy Advance games specifically, came in this off-gray color, and there are aftermarkets in this color. Believe it or not, I don't have a single generic aftermarket shell in this color. Um, I always buy them in the uh, fun colors because, you know, they're more fun. But, yeah, this is this is a pretty typical color, but as you can see by my assortment here, I do have plenty in other colors, uh, such as the Famicom Classics, which come red front, white back. Uh, there are also the Famicom Disk System Classics, which come in a full yellow shell, and unfortunately, I don't have one here. I have one somewhere, but I did the Mako thing where I put it away in the convenient place instead of the correct place, and now I don't know where that is. Um, I'll find it eventually. It's probably stuck in a Game Boy somewhere, and um, yeah, I don't know. I'll stumble across it eventually, but I don't have it. You'll have to take my word for it, but they look more or less like this, but with a game label on them. Um, then, of course, we have the Mega Man series. We have, it comes in red, teal, and blue here. Uh, these, the red and blue ones are both Mega Man 4. Um, I don't know what the difference is. I've never played these games and I don't really care to. I just bought them because I thought the colors were neat. And then there's Mega Man 5. And then there's this slightly different blue here that I had separated because it is not actually the same color. And it is an OEM cart. It's you know, slightly more purplish indigo, um, and I thought it would might make a neat flash cart, but it turns out it already is a flash cart. So this particular game, I don't know what it's called because I can't read that. It is official. It does not save, but the intent was that you could flash a game to it. Um, now, it's not a standalone thing, and to be honest, I haven't tried reflashing it standalone, uh, but the intent is it's more or less like that white Nintendo power cart that I had for Game Boy Color, except for Game Boy Advance. It's a super cool thing, um, and I realized that they're kind of rare, so I don't necessarily want to cut it up, but they're, rare does not necessarily equate valuable, and they're certainly not useful. If you don't get one that already has a game on it, you're not really going to get very far with it. Um, now, it will always boot to this, but you notice it wants me to connect it up to a GameCube. There, there's nothing else. This this doesn't do any anything else uh, because there's no game on it. I don't know if it just has never been flashed or if it was flashed, but then they deleted it. Judging by the wear on the back of this cart, it doesn't look like it was very heavily used. So it was probably part of someone's collection, got parted out, and then it ended up in my hands. And... Um, here we are. I don't have the GameCube game that goes with it, and even if I did, I don't speak the language, and it's a Japanese exclusive, so it is what it is. But anyway, plenty to choose from as far as OEM goes, uh, but it's not quite that simple. Of course, things get a little bit more complicated, because if we pop open an OEM cart here, which this is a uh, legitimate Pokemon Silver that I took the game out of for demonstration purposes. Um, if you're wondering about the label, this is semi-official. It is officially licensed, but an unofficial variant. It came in a magazine 
called Koro Koro, I believe, and uh, relatively popular in Japan. So if you see these, it's probably a legit game. There's one for Ruby, and there's also one for Emerald. The Emerald one seems really rare. I have one too. But anyway, that's not the point. Uh, the official game carts have these little tabs in the sides here to locate the actual game. Oh, I mixed up my stuff. Whereas the aftermarket cart shells do not have those tabs because the flash carts are not built with those tabs in mind. Um, I guess the cart makers determined that if they wanted to use big chips like this, they needed all the room they can get. Another thing is that these carts are physically a little bit taller. So if you jam one into a Game Boy Advance, you notice it sticks out. It's not that significant, but it's enough. Like you, you notice it. It's there. You notice it. Whereas if you take a, uh, let's get one with a game in it. How about? Got a fire red here. If we jam a fire red in there. We notice it is perfectly flush with the bottom of the Game Boy, and that is the intent. Uh, but the aftermarket ones don't do that. Now, the aftermarket ones, the generic ones that I'm talking about, you, you know, you pop on AliExpress, you find them. They come in five, six, seven colors. Um, one color for every Pokemon game. So Ruby, Sapphire, Emerald, Fire Red, and Leaf Green. Then the generic gray that I talked about. And then a brand new color that came out very recently, which is this transparent one. And of the generic GBA cart shells, it is by far the best in my opinion. Um, because it just looks so darn good, I think. But it is the lowest quality option, I think. Now, you can always take an OEM cart shell and modify it by uh, cutting out those tabs, and you'll be able to fit a uh, flash card in there a little bit easier. You'll also have to cut out some tabs in the top here. It's kind of hard to tell. I picked a poor, poor choice of shell color. You can see on the top half, there is a matching indent there. Uh, you might have to trim that out too, depending. Probably not, but it is what it is. Anyway, pretty neat. Um, that's what these are. You can mix and match them. They're all right as far as uh, cutting stuff up. They're your best option because they're by far the cheapest. Uh, and I mean cheap, not least expensive. They are the cheapest. Um, if you have a GBX cart reader, which by the way, of all the cart readers out there right now, I think this is probably one of the best ones. It certainly has the best flash cart support. I'm really pleased with it. Uh, the Pro variant is the exact same as the regular variant, uh, which I think has finally been discontinued in favor of the Pro one. Uh, the only difference is the Pro variant is designed to fit into a Game Boy Advance cart shell so that you have housing with it instead of just having a bare PCB. Uh, the only caveat is that you got to cut a um, USB-C port hole and if you want access to the um, safe remove button you'll need to drill out a hole for that. Um, but the safe remove feature for GBX specifically is controllable through software so you really don't need a physical button. It's just handy if you're a weirdo like me who's going through a bunch of carts to flash. Um, but you do need it for firmware updates because you got to press and hold that and then plug it in. But aside from firmware updates, that's pretty much it. GBX does not fit in an OEM cart shell because, again, it has to do with those tabs. The spacing on these is a little bit different. And like I said, you know, you, you jam one of these into a Game Boy, it is longer. They are longer on the inside than... OEM shells. Um, it's not some weird TARDIS situation. Uh, but anyway, there are two new shell options, and I am not sure how well I should talk these up due to uh, their lack of av availability right now, uh, but they are pretty nice. These ones, you might notice the shape is a little bit different. They don't have that uh, shoulder on the side. Uh, but they are otherwise about the same thing. They don't have a Game Boy Advance logo there. They don't have any weird cutouts, uh, except in the back. You might notice, gee, that's that's a weird indent pattern on there. But if we take a look at the 
ever drive here, you might notice some similarities. If we flip it over, you'll see even those same cutouts. Because this is an EverDrive cart shell, uh, Crix had started selling these pretty recently. They're a little bit more expensive than these like generic clears. Um, they're they're pretty good. I've been really satisfied with them. Unfortunately, some of them, especially the clears, tend to have these defects I've noticed uh, right there. I don't know what specifically it's from, but I'm guessing it is an artifact of the uh, molding. They're pretty good carts. Now, unfortunately, I did have to cut the crap out of this one to get an inside gadgets flash cart to fit in there. You can sort of see on the top here where I had to shave down the inside all along that side, uh, and then I was able to get it to fit. It was not an easy trim, but it does fit the uh, inside gadgets flash carts after modification. And you notice once it's installed, it is nice and flush. I think they look really good and the price is right. Now, unfortunately, like I just alluded to, they're not available right now. I don't know when that's gonna change. And unfortunately, I don't think it's going to be for a while. The creator of these carts only sold them officially on his website. Uh, to my knowledge, he did not have these listed on any of his resellers. Um, and like I said, these are EverDrive cases. So these are Cricks made. Um, so they weren't on like Stone Age Gamer or anything like that. And if you've been keeping up with the news, uh, you might have heard about something going on in uh, Eastern Europe uh, that I don't really want to get into because it's not really the point of this video and because I'm fairly certain YouTube is going to be if they haven't already put up filters on that sort of thing and I don't want to get my video flagged for that even though I've probably already said enough to do that. Regardless, um, his store is currently shut down and he is taking shelter in his basement, last I heard on Twitter. And, you know, I wish him the best. And that's, that's, that's all I have to say about it. It's, it's a darn shame. They're nice shells. I hope him and his family can, can make it out of that situation safely. Um... That's all I have to say about the shells. They do, they do come in a few different colors. You've got yellow and white, mix and match there. Uh, also got black and yellow. Um, in this particular case, I was going to make an AGS aging cart repro, but I never got around to it. Crix did not make these in that, in the gray that the uh, Game Boy Advance games usually came in, which would have been the proper shell choice, but it didn't matter too much because it, you know, it doesn't have the shoulders. It was never going to look official and it was just going to have a flash card in it anyway, but they're nice shells if you can get your hands on them. And if, as long as you don't mind that weird defect from the molding. But there you go. Now, Last but not least, and probably what you came here to see, we have some brand new shells. I've had one sitting down here this whole time. This is a new, quote unquote, high quality game cart shell, excuse me. Um, and they do live up to that namesake. Um, that weird tight fit aside. The uh, carts much like OEM, are designed with four clips and like a slide lock feature. They're a little bit tight in that slide, but aside from taking them apart and putting them back together, that's about the only flaw I've noticed with them. They are designed much like the aftermarket shells in that they don't have either of the tabs on the side or the top. So it should fit uh, aftermarket flash carts, and we'll, we'll try it out in just a second. Uh, but one difference is that it is actually, it's not perfectly flush, it is still a little bit proud, but it is much more flush than the other generic aftermarket cart shells. I totally lost, here's one. Let me just grab another GBA and we can look at them at the same time and compare. Let me hold that in because there's no game cart holding that in. 
So yeah, it's still a hair proud, but it's much closer. And the best part is they come in all sorts of fun colors. So let us check that out. I've got all these over here. I, I, I got I got a bunch of colors because I wanted to experiment and I wanted to show them off. So what the deal is here, there's like 20 some odd colors. Um, one of my favorites here is they made the GBA cart shell in with the Pokemon Crystal uh, plastic. So if you recognize, where is it? I reshelled my EverDrive from last time in one of the new high quality shells. And I've got a Game Boy Color here in that exact same plastic. They also made the Game Boy Advance cart shells in that plastic. And I think they look sweet as heck, but I have no idea what I'm gonna use this for yet. Oh, I found another one. Um, it's neat. It's neat as all heck. Um, one possibility is we can make Game Boy Color flash carts pretty easily, but make them half height so that they fit in this shell and then modify the corner so that it depresses the mode select switch in a GBA. And then we could have like a half heart, a half height cart that plays Pokemon Crystal without an emulator. And you know, it doesn't stick out of the GBA. I think it'd be pretty neat, uh, but we'll save that for later. Um, I will actually put that with the blue. <laughs> I bought one but I think I got two clear reds instead. Uh, there should be a fire red color red, but I don't know what happened to it. Like I said, I put stuff down in the convenient place, not the correct place, and well, I think I lost it. But anyway, red, blue, crystal, uh, but they also came in like the Pokemon colors. So we have Ruby here, Leaf Green, uh, Emerald, and then Sapphire. And as far as like color accuracy, they're not spot on. There are there are some differences. Like if I'm gonna take a Ruby, and you can see like the, the texture itself is a little bit different. Uh, this one's shinier, maybe it's just been handled more. But it just doesn't doesn't look quite right. Uh, let me pop open. These are not flashcards. Let me find them. Wait, I got one in here. Right here. I forgot I was messing with this already. I've got the Pokemon Sapphire in here. And see, like I said, they're a little bit tight getting them apart. Put Sapphire in this Ruby shell. They do fit OEM games just fine. That's about all I tested them with so far. And yeah, so you can see some differences, but it's pretty darn spot on. The biggest difference, of course, the text is, uh, the text is made with a different injection molding feature and quite frankly, I think it looks even better on the aftermarket shells than it does on the OEM ones, but it is what it is. If you're looking for differences, trust me, you're not gonna find an OEM game in one of these aftermarket shells and like not have that disclosed. People gotta get really good at label transfers to do that sort of thing. And in all likelihood, if it's something like Pokemon in particular, you can still get the Japanese ones relatively cheap, unless it's Emerald. Um, but the point is you're probably still going to see an aftermarket label on there because if the case is destroyed enough that you'd want to replace it, the label probably is too. That's made of paper after all. But anyway, it's close enough that, you know, next to each other, you know, one in both of them in my hands, I can tell the difference. But like, if this were just the only one on my desk, You'd look at this and at a glance you'd go oh yeah that's a legit pokemon emerald or pokemon <laughs> pokemon ruby and yeah i mean it the color looks fantastic if you want 
If you want to be absolutely sure you're looking for dead giveaways, the clear ones are the easiest to tell. Like the Game Boy Color ones, they all have this weird little um, injection inlet mold mark at the bottom here. You can like cut this off or shave it down to make it a little bit less noticeable, but unfortunately the plastic just does discolor there and it does that on every single shell, Game Boy Color and Game Boy Advance. Uh, another thing, uh, like I said, because they don't have those tabs there, if you just flip it over and look for the tabs, you can see them through the clear shell and you can see that they're not there on this clear shell. You can also see, uh, well, not so much on the clear shell. It's pretty hard to tell in the ruby, but only because I know what to look for. If you're looking at like an auction listing, you're not going to see it in the picture. Uh, but they don't have the um, the latches or the tabs in the top that I was mentioning. So we can mix and match some parts of the shell. We can put an OEM front on the aftermarket back, but we cannot put an aftermarket front on an OEM back. At least not without trimming those tabs because it won't fully close. But otherwise it does does fit reasonably well. And I think that's actually a similar case with the Crix shells, if you can manage to get one. I believe the OEM front fits. Yeah, OEM front fits. And that's in my hand. There it is. Oh yeah, the Crix ones go together. I mean, obviously without that shoulder, it doesn't quite match up but nice to have, you know? Screw holes gonna line up, all the uh, latches line up, so on and so forth. There's enough clearance. Uh, but yeah, these Game Boy Advance shells are gonna be pretty similar to the Game Boy Color ones, um, which I neglected to show in my last video. So we have an OEM shell here and one of the new shells here. We will put the new shell front on the OEM back. Fits great. OEM front on the new back does not fit at all. And that is because of this little notch in the corner. So it works, sort of. It's like the opposite. But it's, it's a nice to have if you want to mix and match. I don't recommend it, but it does work and it can be made to work. Anyway. Here is the generic gray. Let us go ahead and compare the colors. There it is. You can see the new one is a little bit lighter and obviously has no wear and tear marks on it. Texture is pretty spot on. Um, and again, you know, if I just had this one on my desk, this alone, you'd look at this and go, yeah, that's that looks like a legit cart. But Two of them side by side, you see the colors are a little bit different. Now, hey, maybe this one's a little bit yellow. Okay, let's check this one. Same thing. Okay, let's check this one. Same thing. The color is different, but again, it's only different enough that you notice side by side. You don't quite notice it when it's just the single thing by itself. So that is Ruby. Let us take a look at Emerald. And Similar, again, close, so freaking close. And I think we're gonna have the same result for all of them, where a single cart by itself, it's close enough. And I'm putting the motherboard in there just so that we don't get any weird uh, colors due to a lack of uh, light transmission. Slightly different, more than good enough. I'm very pleased with them. Now let us check out, did I already do Sapphire? I don't think I did. So let's put Sapphire in here. And because I only have the one motherboard handy, don't really want to take apart another one. We'll just use my other Sapphire. Now, Sapphire is a different story. Sapphire one looks quite a bit lighter. Uh, not bad, but 
nowhere near as accurate as the other two that I already checked. Uh, I won't be able to check, what was it, fire red, but we can check leaf green. Uh, now, of course, this is the wrong motherboard for leaf green, but they're not transparent enough that you'll be able to tell. And I like testing with the Ruby Sapphire Emerald carts because of the regular shaped GBA carts, they do have the biggest motherboard. Some games have slightly smaller motherboards, but this one fills the whole space and it has a battery. There we go. And leaf green. Again, color's different, but it's close enough, right? All right, so that is about all I've got for the comparisons. Let's go through some of the other colors. Like I've got, I believe this is a glow in the dark. Nope. Just a ice blue, not glow in the dark. We've got clear, of course. I'm gonna go ahead and throw this motherboard back in here because there was a comparison I wanted to make. We have Clear, the new clear, new clear shell. It's not nuclear. And then we have the old clear. Comparing the two side by side, I prefer the new one. Um, the lettering is better. It's slightly more transparent. The fit and finish is better. It actually feels pretty decent. Um, one thing with the old transparent shells is like they have all the proper plastic markings on them. So if you look in there, you can see it has a little ABS stamp, uh, side B, I don't know what that is. And then on the front, we also have the ABS stamp and then side A, whereas the new aftermarket ones don't have any of the proper stamps, but I don't think that the maker cared about uh, complying with Canadian standards or is it US standards or maybe both, I don't know. Either way. Um, they also used trademark logos, so I sincerely doubt they care about compliance. But other than those stamps, if you cared about authenticity, they're missing. But if you cared about authenticity, you'd be using OEM shells and not aftermarket ones anyway, especially in colors that were never officially a thing in aftermarket. Uh, and on that note, this flash cart, this one in particular, it's, I'm sorry, this is not a flash cart. This is an OEM game on an aftermarket PCB. This particular PCB does not fit in the new cart shells because some of the resistors are placed a little bit too low and this bottom wall gets in the way, so you'd have to shave it down. I don't, I don't really feel like shaving it down, so I'll just leave it there for now because I am going to swap that onto a new motherboard eventually. Uh, other colors, we got this uh, lightish gray. Not quite white. Um, I believe this is the same color as the GBA video carts, but I don't have one to compare, so you'll have to use your best judgment on that one. Here it is next to a leaf green. As a sort of calibration, and here it is next to a sapphire. If you want to try and calibrate to yours. Um, we've also got, ooh, that's, that's an interesting one that I forgot to mention. This one, come back to that. I believe this one is glow in the dark. Yes, it is. If you want to get a glow in the dark one, they are. This one's glow in the dark, this one's not. Even though they look like they'd be that color. We've got the yellow, and now that I have a matching gray, I can go ahead and throw that together like that, drop a flash cart in there, and then I've got my own aftermarket AGS aging cart but I'll do that later. Uh, the ROM is not exactly, not exactly legitimate, so sorry, I can't really share it, but trust me, if you search AGS aging, you probably find a link to the cutting room floor and you'll probably find the ROM, but who am I to say? Who knows? Um, I've also got this bad boy, which is like a dark smoke color. And then this light one, which is, I believe it's supposed to be an atomic purple. And I thought it looked pretty neat, but having it in person, it's, it's not as, it's not as nice as I'd hoped. Uh, 
compared to an actual atomic purple, it's not quite the same purple. I mean, it's Game Boy Color, so it doesn't really matter because all the atomic purple Game Boy Advances are going to be aftermarket. So they'll probably match a little bit better, but I don't have one to compare. Um, I guess let's go ahead and talk about flash carts now and compatibility. So EverDrive specifically, if you want to put an EverDrive in an aftermarket shell, your only choices are, if you can get them, Crix shells. Um, now you will have to modify Crix shells if you buy the GBA one. He just sells EverDrive shells with the hole already cut out, the logo on there, and I believe it comes with a sticker, or at least he did sell them. Got ahead of myself there. Um, they don't quite fit in aftermarket. Let's get a clear one. The new ones, even if we cut a hole for the SD, which I'll just remove for now, it does not fit because there are chips on the back and the board does not sit low enough. You, sh you see how the board is sticking up? It should be nice and flush with that edge. Um, but that's due to these chips on the back. And unless you basically mill this thing out with this cut pattern, you're not gonna get anywhere. So stick with the OEM shells for the EverDrive. And unfortunately, all the other Game Boy Advance multi-ROM carts are going to be the same story. So by that, I mean um, both iterations of the Easy Flash. Uh, if you have, for some reason, one of these awful things, Super Card is not going to fit either. Again, chips on the back and the screw pattern doesn't even line up. So it's a neat color. And I'm kind of disappointed that it wasn't replicated with the new cart shells, but it is what it is. Um, we'll save that from here too. Let us, let's try jamming an inside gadgets cart in there. Where'd my Metroid go? So I believe inside gadgets carts should fit either as is or with extremely minimal modification. So let's try it out in there. It doesn't quite fit. We need to shave down. Now it's gonna be a lot easier to just modify the PCB. It's slightly too wide right at this first step. So we need to file that down with a file and now that I'm seeing that, I remember that's exactly what I had to do with this card as well. I filed this thing down so it fit in here. You can see it clears with plenty of room on this side, but on this side it's right up against that wall because I had to file it down and I didn't, I wanted to file as little as possible. And uh, I'm going to have to do that with this one. I am fairly confident this is only a two layer board. So I should be able to get away with it as long as I don't hit any of these traces and there is plenty of clearance on the edges. So I will probably do that, just not now. Uh, I believe Alex has already adjusted his flash cart footprint so that they should fit in the new shells pretty pretty nicely. Um, if you have an old older flash cart, unfortunately, you know, you're gonna have to go to town on it with a, uh, with a file. Or if you have a way to mill the shell out, we just need to cut a little bit of tolerance right down here at the bottom. And then that'll jam in there nicely. Uh, if I take this one, yeah. That's not the right screwdriver. Pop this out and you can take a better look at the modifications that I made. Uh, so I shaved that down on the cart shell. You can see how much I cut that down because I have a way to mill that out. And then pop that out of there. And you can see on both of these sides, you can see there's a little bit of copper showing. If the camera focuses, if you can even see that, that's hecka, heckin' tiny. Um, yeah, I had to shave the cart down on both of those sides. But this one should fit nicely in here. And indeed it does. So. I can do that. Um, I've already got the Crix shell modified and 
at this point, it's kind of special to me, so I'm going to keep using it. Especially since it, after all this work, it fits so nicely. There's inside gadgets, flashcards. Don't quote me on that. Uh, like I said, they should be modified, the new ones going forward. But if you're buying them directly through Alex, you can ask them. If you're buying them through one of the resellers, the stock might be a little bit old, so don't count on it. But it should be fine to shave them down. But again, double check with Alex before you do so, and there shouldn't be any problems. Of course, if you want to just jam it in there, it might be close enough that it's fine. Uh, but it might also crack the shell, so don't do that. I didn't crack that one, but that's okay. Um, I think that's about it. The generic flash carts, or uh, reproduction carts, as you want to call them. Uh, I usually use the term bootlegs, because most of you would get one of these impersonating a Pokemon game. Uh, let's try... Oh, it's right here. Uh, jam that in a little bit too tight. There we go. The generic aftermarket ones, I believe that's what the case was designed for. So, eh, it sticks up a little, but I think that's just the flash cart being flash cart and not something to do with the case. Slides closed noisily, and yeah, it's fine. So if you want to use your generic repros in these things, that should work just fine too. I am going to go ahead and keep it in the shell that I already have for it, because I'm not really feeling up to transferring my uh, custom high quality aftermarket label. Um, I'll make a new label for it eventually. But that's for when I transfer it into this shell. Um, I think that's about all I got. Let us go ahead and circle back real quick and talk about the Easy Flash carts. Uh, these both have the same problems and limitations that the Cheapo Supercard SD carts have. Don't get these, by the way. These things are garbage. Uh, and the uh, EverDrive. Whatever I did with that, there it is where they have chips on the back. So unless you have a way to mill out the shell to fit those chips, you're gonna have a bad time. Um, the Omega DE has a much better chance of fitting because it is actually the proper size, whereas the original Omega is like a 60% a size cart so that you could jam it into a DS slot with a custom case that it does come with. Um, this one you'd have to get a little bit more creative as far as spacing goes because there's no tabs to lock anything in place. So if you were to mill that out and then jam it in your cart, the PCB is just going to slide up or jam it in your, um, your uh, Game Boy. All right, real quick, I suppose I might as well talk about the elephants in the room. Uh, I had planned on making my own carts and this is what I came up with. This first one here is resin printed in uh, a resin I was trying out at the time. As you can tell, it is extraordinarily brittle. I had to glue it back together, but it does work. I mean, it's more or less just the OEM design with both of the uh, tabs and ridges featured in. So it does mix and match, and I don't know why I am like selling this and showing it off because I'm not releasing the design files for this, but I figure it's probably worth mentioning if you've seen this around on my channel before or, you know, in the background, sneaky, sneaky cart picks. It's not 100%, and this is actually the earlier one, but this print was kind of garbage, so I wasn't really happy with it. Uh, this resin is much better, but the print itself didn't come out too well. That one fits a little bit better. I was terrified to do this in case it cracks. And that one fits OEM as well. 
almost. If the print were a little bit better, you can hear it squeaking as I try and close that. It's I. I don't like it. The print, that is. I'm very fond of my design. And, uh, yeah, these, these two are both just 3D prints. And, believe it or not, the most expensive option of the lot if you wanted to get your own 3D prints. Uh, if you have a 3D printer and can print these reasonably, um, resin is pretty much required. I don't think they'll print on a FDM printer. But this is what it is. Um, I think that's about all of our options for Game Boy Advance. Now, the flash carts themselves... Oh, we should try the retro stage cart. Totally forgot. The flash carts are few and far between. The Game Boy Advance carts work pretty similar to the Game Boy Color flash carts, with one exception. So, you notice as I pop this thing open, this is a flash card, I can reflash this. There are three main chips here. Whereas if I were to take a uh, regular GBA cart apart, there are two main chips. Now, I know this one's a bad example because it has that third chip there, but that third chip is just the real-time clock circuit. Most games do not have that, so we can safely ignore that and just look at the two chips we have. Um, any game with a battery is also going to have one of those. It's not just real-time clock, it's a, um, it's a battery hypervisor, so anything with a battery-backed save is going to have one of those two. But regardless, there's those two main chips. Uh, if we look at, for example, a Game Boy Color game, this is an OEM game, we have three main chips here again. Um, and then that fourth one because battery back save, like I said. We have the save ROM, the mask ROM, and then the bank switcher. So the save ROM holds the save data, the mask ROM holds the game data, and then the bank switcher allows the Game Boy to swap between little uh, programming chunks. So I don't want to. I don't want to get too dive too deep into this because it, it is really complicated. And if you don't understand programming, it's probably not going to be too easy to follow. But for the most part, games are a lot larger than 32 kilobytes. Game Boys, the original Game Boy, not Game Boy Advance, can only access 32 kilobytes of ROM. So if you wanted to run something like Pokemon Silver, which is a lot larger than 32 kilobytes at one megabyte. Um, what you can do is you use a bank switcher. So what this chip does is it serves up the ROM data in 32 kilobyte slices to the Game Boy. And that way the Game Boy can only read 32 kilobytes at a time, but you can send a signal to this thing to change which, which 32 kilobytes you want to read. And it actually works the same way for the save data. The Game Boy can only address, again, 32 kilobytes. So if you have something that uses 64, then... There you go. Um, I'm saying kilobytes, but I think it's kilobits. I'm not 100% sure. Don't quote me on it. It doesn't matter. The concept is the exact same. Game Boy Advance did the exact same thing, uh, except that they baked that bank switcher into the ROM chip, so now you only have two dedicated chips. Well, to make a flash cart, you still need that bank switcher so that you can use your ROM and your save data. Um, and a lot of people have a hard time with the Game Boy Advance flash carts for two reasons. One, there is no open source design, so there's nothing to copy. And two, you have to re-implement that controller from scratch, and there's very little documentation on it on account of there being no open source designs. So they are fewer and far between. You cannot just take a Game Boy Advance cart and swap out the ROM chip and then reflash it because, like I said, you'd need that dedicated bank switcher. So that's why we only have customs as an option instead of, like, full customs, instead of taking a game, that's a bad example, instead of, uh, no, I thought I had one. Is that, oh, there it is. Oops. Tossing it. Instead of taking a regular game and then swapping out the ROM chip, which you can do on a Game Boy Color, you cannot do that on Game Boy Advance. You have to go full custom. And you'd end up with something like this, which we have full custom on Game Boy Color anyway, but besides the point. Anywho, um, RetroStage made these 
I think they're pretty neat. They don't do anything that the Inside Gadgets carts don't already do. Uh, in fact, I believe Inside Gadgets can even flash these things, uh, but that only applies to the GBA version. The Game Boy Color version is a little bit more complicated, and I don't believe Inside Gadgets can flash them, or at least it can, but not with the recommended software. You have to, you have to delve into older software versions that Alex made, and um, not recommended. But the Game Boy Advance ones, pretty good. One of the things that I really liked about them was that they were designed to be nice and compact, and they have these slots in here so that you could drop them into OEM cart shells. Now, because this fits in an OEM cart shell, I am feeling real confident in saying it'll fit in these aftermarket ones as well. But let's just quickly double check. You can see it kind of moves around a little bit, so it's not actually as good a fit as I thought. Uh, GM that on there. But it's probably good enough. Let us try it out. Yeah, good enough. Let's see what's on here. Oh, Pokemon. Uh, these carts do not officially support Pokemon, so you might notice it's going to complain. Yeah, there's no real-time clock circuit. Uh, there's also no save because this is patched. Um, I patched this ROM so that it will work with this hardware type for saving, but that's about it. I wasn't able to flash my actual save to it because this thing doesn't have enough save RAM. This uses FRAM, uh, and with Game Boy Advance games in particular, you need to match the save data type. Game Boy Color, there were only two types of save data, and unless you had Kirby Tilt and Tumble, you used SRAM. Um, Game Boy Advance is quite a bit more complicated, but... I'm going to stick with OEM for now for these, uh, but I can't always drop that on there. That's pretty sweet. That way I can appreciate that a little bit better. I'll have to either modify this shell to put slits in there to line up with those notches or cut those notches off entirely, but since those notches help position the motherboard, I'm not so sure I want to modify those, so we'll just sham that back in there for now. All right, I hope that wasn't too much of an information overload. I can go on all day about carts. They're super cool, and I'm glad I split this video up into two different parts, Game Boy Color and then Game Boy Advance, because otherwise I would have been going on for two hours about cart shells. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have snapped. That was probably really loud. Um, they're super neat. I like them. I will throw a link to these new ones down here uh, in the description. I'll throw a link to the new ones. I will also throw a link to Crix's Twitter uh, because unfortunately these will not be on his store. Um, you can keep up with him, make sure he's doing all right. Uh, the unfortunate reality of the situation is with what's going on, it's going to be a while before he can get these things back up on the store. Um, and don't be a selfish cunt about it. Be real. He's gone through some stuff. Be supportive. Be sympathetic. Um, you don't need a flash card. You can wait. If you really need a flash card. These, these didn't go anywhere. You can get these. Anyway, I think that's all I've got. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to hit me up in the comments. Uh, I'm, I'm really digging these new flashcards. I, I don't, I don't know what to do, man. Like, I want to put all my Inside Gadgets ones in the new shells, but I'll have to modify some of them. Uh, ooh. I forgot I had this one. Um, I want to put my Retro Stage ones in there, too, because these shells don't really, don't really jive with the OEM shells, but maybe... I don't know. I'll figure something out. Maybe I'll just like double-sided tape the board in. That seems to work for some of the other flashcards I've done. Um, oh, let's check. Let's check GBX real quick. I think it should fit. Gotta pull this apart. I will probably make a jig so that cutting this out is a little bit easier. Oh. Excuse, excuse me. That's double-sided taped in. That's not going to come out. 
I don't know. I think my other one is double-sided taped as well. I have two, because of course I do. Nah. Okay. These two boards use the exact same layout with the exception of uh, the older version does not have the uh, hot swap capability, so it doesn't have that button. But, what the heck? But other than that, the uh, like footprint, the board outline and everything should be the same. So we should be able to, for example, jam that in there. Oh, nope, we're running into the same problem that we had with his flash cart, where this little step is a little bit too wide. So I would have to file that down just a little bit. And then of course we'd have to cut a hole for the USB port. With the clear shells, that is a heck of a lot easier because you can just jam that in there and then trace your outline. Um, I will probably make a jig for this thing like I did the Game Boy Pocket uh, USB-C mod. Uh, you just drop your Game Boy Pocket shell in there and then you have your hole cut out already aligned and whatnot. Um, I'll probably make something that works pretty similarly. You just drop that in there and then you can file out your hole. Um, file responsibly. But there you go. Neat stuff. I'm super excited to go play with this stuff now. Anyway, that's all I got. Uh, and I'll catch you all next time. Bonus points if you get some uh, some custom labels for your flashcards. <laughs>